Hello, my name is Talon Miller and welcome to another Redis Lightning demo. Let's get started. Today, we are going to be setting up a Redis Enterprise cluster on Kubernetes inside of Google Cloud using GKE. This has to be one of the, if not the fastest and most efficient ways to setting up a Redis Enterprise cluster. And of course, the steps that we're doing on GCP can be replicated across the other clouds as well. So with that, let's dive in. All of the steps I'm gonna be taking on this demo or on this documentation page, which I'll include in the description below so you can follow along. And before we dive into GCP, let's go over the prerequisites. So first we need a Kubernetes cluster in a supported distribution that includes GCP on GKE, or you can do things like EKS or AKS or OpenShift or VMware Tanzu. We need a minimum of three worker nodes. We need a Kubernetes client or kubectl and then access to Docker Hub or Container Catalog, et cetera, to bring down the binaries for the operator for Redis Enterprise. So with that, let's dive into GCP. All right, we are in GCP on the Kubernetes engine page, and we need to create a Kubernetes cluster, which will actually take care of all four of the prerequisites. So let's get started. It's really quick. Click Create. I like to do the standard configuration. And there's only three things that we need to do here. We need to name it. We need to change the sizing of the nodes. And we also need to set the subnet. All right, and then in the nodes, I recommend at least four CPU and 16 gigabytes of memory. And I will show you why later. And then in networking, set the subnet, which I have as a default. All right, and then if that's it, go ahead and click Create, which this will just take about a minute or so. Okay, my cluster is set up. Let's go ahead and go into it, and let's connect. We're gonna run in Cloud Shell. And then I'll bring up this uh, terminal so everyone can see it. All right, great. The first thing you need to do is authenticate. Enter and authorize. All right, now to the actual commands, which like I said, is on the article or the documentation page that I shared with you earlier. We'll go ahead and create the namespace. And then the next thing I like to do is just set the context to the name of my namespace so that I don't have to keep specifying my namespace. But all, of, all of the rest of the commands will apply to this namespace. All right, great. And now we need to install the operator. If you're not sure, or if you haven't heard about the Redis Enterprise operator, go check out my tech talk on Redis Enterprise and Kubernetes. I go in depth on the operator and Kubernetes with Redis Enterprise. So yeah, should answer a lot of your questions. But for here, let's go ahead and install it. The first command is going to be grabbing the binaries from GitHub. And then let's go ahead and apply it. Right, shouldn't take too long, done. And then something that I like to do is verify the operator is running. And do you remember how I mentioned you need a certain amount of uh, CPU and memory? As you can see, my operator has only been up for nine seconds as when I put in that command, the kubectl get deployment. This won't complete for you if you don't have enough memory. It'll just keep spinning and spinning and it'll say zero out of one ready and the age will continue. It could be an hour. It just won't complete. So you need enough memory. So if you're stuck on this, and you're not getting one out of one, uh, go up the memory on your nodes. All right, the next step is to create a Redis Enterprise cluster created from a YAML file. And I have a test YAML file here on the documentation page. And this is where you can do a lot of different configurations for what you want uh, to be on your cluster. But mine's very simple. Uh, it's just establishing the cluster on the three nodes that we have. And then we're going to apply that YAML file. And this is where it can take five to six minutes. We're going to essentially spin up those pods. So what you can do is we're going to verify the, 
the rec that we just created. Okay, so it looks like it's setting up three nodes. It's valid. And then this command I really like. Um, it's essentially giving you the rollout status for the pods. With my face here. As you can see, it says waiting for three pods uh, to be ready. And then it'll count down saying waiting for two pods and then waiting for one pod. Um, once it's complete, then you'll be able to run commands again. This can take up to five minutes, five to six minutes. Uh, so I'll come back to this once it's done. All right, my pods have just been spun up. Let's see how long that took. Looks like I've had it about for 10 minutes. I think that took about five or six minutes, like I mentioned before. So we've set up the namespace, the operator, and the Redis Enterprise cluster. The next portion on this documentation page is setting up the admission controller, which helps with like syntax and uh, validating things with your REDB or uh, your file to create Redis Enterprise databases. Um, I'm going to skip that portion just because I don't need it for my deployment, but um, it's highly recommended. So go ahead and do that if you need to and test it out. The last portion that I'm going to be doing is creating a Redis Enterprise database, which of course is going to be very similar to what we did for the Redis Enterprise cluster. I have a YAML file here, and then we'll go ahead and apply it. Once again, this is in the YAML file. There's so many configurations that you can set here for your Redis Enterprise database. Okay. Applied, done, created. And our very last command is to get the secret for our cluster. And there is our secret. That's everything that you need in order to access for your Redis Enterprise database, which is, of course, what we've set up is a Redis Enterprise cluster on Kubernetes, on Google Cloud in under 10 minutes. So that was really fast, really efficient. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I hope to see you in our next Lightning demo. Thanks.